Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest with us today. His name is Dr. Tr uh, Thomas Troutman, and he is an amazing individual who studies the brain, and he focuses on marketing and how the brain works and about persuasion. There's so much he has to say today, and it's really going to be very interesting because it really can improve your life in all areas of your life. E even though some of it pertains to business, it really pertains to your entire life, and he's going to explain how. Now, now, Dr. Thomas, it's wonderful to have you on the show. I'm very excited to have you on the show. Now, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Hey, Stacey. Thanks. Thanks. First of all, thanks for having me on your show. So what I'm doing, you, you pretty nicely introduced it. So the, the basis of what I'm doing is ethical persuasion. So I created the ethical persuader system based on the ethical persuasion formula. And all that is based on converting brain science into actionable tools. And what I call ethical persuasion is, uh, as I told you, it's about driving the decisions you want from people while those same people make the decisions they need. And that's by triggering a specific part of the brain and a specific piece of that brain that triggers the decision. Now, that's very interesting because, you know, a lot of times people will try to sell a product or they'll try to, um, you know, convince somebody. And sometimes it can be so very overbearing and it can, you know, it can really, a lot of people think they're trying to sell and they think they're doing really well and they yeah. haven't really grasped the person's trust factor. And, and you know, they're not making the connections they should. Now, when a person is, is trying to communicate well and they're trying to make that connection or that bond with the other individual, what are some things that you feel that are important that people really need to remember when they're speaking to people? Well, the very first thing is that, as you say, they are, they are get, they get very quickly overwhelming because, in fact, they do what I call rational selling. Mm -hmm. you now, when you you want to sell your product, you 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 will talk about the features of the product, you know, the benefits of the product, all those things about the product, and you will talk about yourself, about your company, about all those things. Yeah. Well, in fact, it has been scientifically proven that the part of the brain that makes the decisions is not the rational part. Right. I mean, 97% of the people still think that I have to bring rational arguments, rational information, and then the brain will act on it. When in fact, it's, it's a bottom-up process. Yes. You have to persuade. It's called the primal brain. It's the, it's the oldest part of our brain. It's called primal because we share it with a lot of other animals. It was even called a few years back the reptile brain, but scientists got a little bit pissed that uh, it, it was limited to, to reptile brain. Uh, uh, so, but from the idea, it's the same. We, we make decisions like a crocodile. The only difference is we don't eat our children, even if from time <laughs> to time they deserve it. But no. <laughs> so uh, in fact, when you want to persuade someone, if you have seven seconds. And you have seven seconds to persuade a two to three-year-old child because the primal brain can be compared to a two to three-year-old child Mm -hmm. and lives in a seven seconds window. Right. So what, what's happened before, it doesn't remember. What is going to happen, it doesn't even know it exists. Right. The future is something that comes from the prefrontal cortex, from the neocortex, the rational part of the brain, yeah. the front part that allows you to make planification. Mm -hmm. And by the way, that's the latest part that, that ends its development in the human brain. It stops around age 20, 24. Oh, okay. So that's why you cannot explain I mean, I'm facing that problem at the moment with my, one of my boys who is 18. Try to get him to understand the future. Yes. You know? mm -hmm. So it's all about having him make objectives now that are working today on the minute and not in 10 years because there is no grasp about that. So when you want to convince that primal brain, you have a very little time. So that usual, that classic, you know, elevator speech. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. Where you have 30 seconds, uh, that's already too much. Right. Uh, and I, I will challenge the, 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 the auditors to make their pitch in seven seconds to a child so that that child understands what they are trying to pitch. Right. I can tell you, if you have not trained, you cannot make it happen. Right. Because you have to understand what triggers the decision in the brain. And that's called a subconscious frustration. We have many, but you have to find the one that is connected to what you are trying to sell. Mm. So it may be reputation, it may be time, it may be money, it may be whatever. And if you don't 
trigger that decision maker in the brain, it will revert back to what's working in the 21st century. It will ask for money, a rebate, for a free trial, for more gifts, stuff like that. So it will eat up your resources. Right. And as you were talking about how to talk to that part of the brain, that part of the brain is a survival tool. And as a survival tool, it pays attention to one and only one person itself. Right. So you have to learn something that I call the you language. It's not about I'm going to tell you about my product. No, you are going to learn how you are going to get this, this, and that. Of course, at one stage, you can talk about yourself, but not at the beginning. So your emails should be in the you language. Your website should be in the you language. Right. And when you look at most websites about us, our company, our products, our vision, and the brand is everywhere. Mm -hmm. I think that's really good because I think a lot of people, they don't realize they talk about themselves and they talk about their qualities and, and, or the company's qualities and mission that they forget that they have to really, it's, it's all about the consumer. It's all about what the consumer can benefit and really, I think, hitting those pain points. You know, they always say, is it, you can tell me if it's a truth or a myth, but they say it's very good to focus on an individual's pain points and then help them find a solution and then make them realize that they have the solution. Now, is that is that true or are you should be focusing on a different part of the brain? No, I mean, the, the problem is how you define the pain point. Many people say the pain point is, He wants to grow his company. Mm -hmm. Uh, You want to uh, expand your product line. Oh, you want this. That's what mostly people think about being a pain point. That's why I I make a distinction with the subconscious frustration. Because the subconscious subconscious frustration is what really, really matters for the human being in which it it is present. So uh, I would say, for example, if I'm selling a CRM, a CRM, for example, or any SaaS solution to some uh, CIO or IT guy, I'm not going to go there and talk about all the features. But if I know that the subconscious frustration is the fact that life is going by without seeing my kids grow, I- I'm overdoing it. But then I will say, with you will be home tonight at 5 p.m. And that right. will be the same thing every day. And it's no more weekends spent in the office. It's, it's all about your time with your kids now. Mm-hmm. You see, it has nothing to do with the product itself. Right. If I take another example, let's, let's use cosmetics, for example. Okay. If I'm targeting, and that's why targeting becomes so important, because subconscious frustrations are different from one individual or category to another one. So if I'm selling cosmetics to a 30 to 40 years old uh, group of women, mm-hmm. I'm definitely not targeting a subconscious frustration of women from 20 to 80. Yeah. If I target 30 to 40, I'm not going to say your skin is going to look uh, peachy or it will be nice or whatsoever. No, the subconscious frustration may be that you will from now on be the mom to whom the other moms come to talk with. You are no more going to be that mom that's standing away from everyone because no one wants to talk to her. I'm not talking about the product. In fact, when you try to do ethical persuasion properly, you are no more authorized to talk about the product or about yourself. And we are talking about products, services, stuff like that in the business world, but it's the same thing in your, in your private life. Yeah. You want to go to see a movie. Uh, maybe your, your, your partner doesn't want to go to the movie. So what's going to trigger the decision to accept to go to the movie? Right. Uh, or, or some other things. I, I want to start a new business. Mm-hmm. No. Maybe the the subconscious frustration based on childhood whatsoever is I'm scared. I need safety. I need safety. I need to buy a house. I need need that we have every month so much money on on the account. And that's why I'm I'm working a lot with with the married business owner, as I said, male or female, uh, because it's very difficult from time to time to to get your partner to to accept what you are doing because that safety is not there for sure. Right. Especially at the beginning. Maybe there is no money coming in at the beginning. Maybe you're going to burn the savings and so on. Yeah. So how can you trigger the decision of your spouse to accept, to make the decision to support you? That's right. also ethical persuasion. Now, you were saying um, that the male and the female think very differently. And you just mentioned that also yeah. again. So when you're approaching a male or a female, 
when you're in business, you know, is there a certain way that you should be speaking to that person? Like, well, what are the differences and, and what are the different approaches that are, are most, you know, successful in, in that sense? Or maybe understand so, the female brain versus the male brain. Yeah. So there are many differences, but if you want to be, we can just talk about the, the most persuasive tool you have. Mm -hmm. That's yourself. Right. That's it's, it's your body, body mm -hmm. language, your voice, and then the words. In fact, the words, based on some some studies, some agree, some don't agree, but I like like those figures. Seven percent of the impact of your message are the words you are going to use. Yeah. Your voice, I think, if I remember well, because I always confuse those those numbers. Uh, your voice is, I think, thirty eight percent. And what becomes interesting, male and female, by the way. So, women speak faster than men. Mm -hmm. approximately, uh, we are around 150, 160 words per minute. Women are around 180, 200 words per minute. Oh, wow. When you want, when you, yeah, when you want to be persuasive, and that's very interesting because most people think to do it the other way, you should, in fact, speak 20% faster oh, really? than the person you want to persuade. It doesn't mean that you should make stops because when you speak faster, subconsciously, it shows that you perfectly understand what you are doing. Mm -hmm. When you make a pause, then it becomes a very efficient pause because it shows contrast. And the primal brain loves contrast. Mm. So when you want to work with a woman, if a man wants to persuade a woman, he has to speak faster. Of course, a man cannot speak faster, 20% faster than a woman. Because then it would sound, it would sound absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Women don't need to speak faster than men because they are already speaking faster. Right. If men want to, to persuade other men, they have to speak 20% faster. Women with women, the same thing. And if you look at all the great speakers, uh, you take Tony Robbins, you take Simon Sinek, all, the, all those speakers and, the, and the, top, the top keynotes they gave, yes. their speaking speed is always higher than 170, 180 words per minute. That's right. And you may even notice that that I'm speaking pretty fast because mm -hmm. I I have I have practice I've trained to 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 speak fast when I talk about whether and I love what I'm doing so it's it's easier yeah uh, and 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 very often you hear people who train other people to speak in public say you should speak slowly mm -hmm. because it shows control no it just shows that that you're a teacher and no one wants to listen to a teacher right because it's it's boring. <laughs> <laughs> And again, it's, we are really at the subconscious level. And there are so many things that you can do at the subconscious level that are absolutely crazy. So what are some of those things? Uh, some other things. When you're talking to someone, that's one I love. That's one I love, in fact. Uh, you know, when someone, when someone says something negative or asks a question that could put you in trouble, most people subconsciously, without even knowing it, you have a slight move backwards. Ah. If you are standing in front of someone, you will even may, uh, make a little step backwards. When you're sitting at the table, you may lean back in your chair. Mm -hmm. But if subconsciously you keep control on that and you make one step forward, you don't need to go in the face, but yeah. you just move one step forward or you lean forward, you already won the argument without using your words because that just shows to the other primal brain, come on, come on, big boy, I'm not scared, you know? Mm -hmm. And if you see me giving, when I give workshops, when people try, because of course, when I speak about the brain, there is always one guy who knows more than I, than yeah. I do, who try to, to corner me. I naturally do that movement and I win. Mm -hmm. Except if in front of me, someone knows it and he does the same thing. Right. And then I have to come with real like <laughs> <laughs> They say body movement has a lot also to do with it too. Like if you, if you watch a person, the way they, they move yeah. or their eye, the way they, they look at you or the way they, even if they yeah. come up to you and they shake your hand a specific way, it can mean, yeah. you know, a certain thing. And, you know, so what do you, what you, do you have like advice when it comes to body language as well? Yeah, th there is, there is so much about body language, but you know, we had, I had a very interesting discussion with a very good friend of mine, mine, sorry, who travels a lot. And he said, you know, you and I, so we are tall guys, okay? So we already have an advantage when we go in some foreign country or so. Yeah. But uh, he comes from the army and, and, and I have practiced my, my way to, uh, to behave. 
And usually, because I had a, a company, we started our first company we, we founded with my wife was about motorcycle tours. Mm -hmm. And we're going into uh, North Africa, places like that. Mm -hmm. And no one ever tried to sell me something. Because when I'm working, uh, uh, I practice to, I own the space. You know? okay. I, I stand erect, I have my shoulder back, uh, my, my glance is different. I'm not looking like a tourist. Yes. I'm looking like someone who knows what I'm doing. Right. Even though I have no clue where I'm going. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it's part of that. It's, it, it, you have to, in the body language, if you, if you want to persuade people, you have to show that you self are already persuaded about what you are doing. Yes. Okay. Because then if you aren't, the first thing you are going to do is you are going to talk to persuade yourself. Many people do that when they try to persuade someone or let's come back to selling. They, they, you, it's very interesting because you listen to them. In fact, they are trying to sell to themselves the company they are working with. Right. They are trying to sell to themselves the product they have mm -hmm. because they are persuaded even. So they start the whole persuasion exercise with themselves, forgetting that in front of them, that's the decision maker they need yeah. to persuade. Mm -hmm. So uh, you have to pump your energy up. You have to be there. I mean, there, there's some. Uh, I, I teach that to people who want to speak in public. I like that. It's to... You, know, you make yourself big. You go to the restroom where no one can see you if you're ashamed uh, and you, you spread your arms, you spread your legs and you, in, you inhale as much air as possible and you let it there uh, and you can feel the energy coming up. Yeah. You look at someone like Tony Robbins behind the scene. He has a little trampoline mm -hmm. and before he goes on, on stage, he jumps on that oh, trampoline really? a half dozen times and then he goes on, on stage. He pumps himself up, in fact. Yeah. It, those are little tricks. It's, it's very interesting. And you can do that and it helps you. Even if you have to talk with your spouse, <laughs> go hide in your bedroom, make yourself big <laughs> and go for it. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. It's so amazing how, how the brain works and how people interpret things. And, yeah. you know, some people will automatically, you know, um, connect and, and feel a need to want to work with the person. And then you have people who are skeptics. And when you have people yeah. who are always, you know, whether they may have gotten burnt in the past, they may have, you know, had a, an experience that wasn't good, but they bring it into their, into their present business, ex, you know, ex, you know, experiences. So when you're dealing with a client like that, that has not let go of the mistakes that have been made in the past, you know, is there a certain way that a, a business person can work with somebody like that? or techniques that they use that are, you know, helpful to, you know, because of that? Well, f first of all, you should always agree with them. That's very important. Yes, I understand that, uh, that uh, you have already tried it. It didn't work, but uh, we are still talking, right? We're still talking here. So you still need that solution. So you still need to be home at 5 p.m. You still need the uh, based on the subconscious frustration. So let's let's have a look at how you can do that then there is a very nice technique that i like to use which is the what if question mm. so you can only use it if you know the subconscious frustrations yeah let's let's use that it guy so what if you could go home at 5 p.m every evening right and then you make four four seconds real four seconds when people can look at their watch four seconds it's long Yes. When you shut up, it's long. I'm not doing it here because then I'm going to get boring. So <laughs> it's very, very, four seconds of science. Then what if your wife would, IT guys are mostly men. Let me use that example. Okay. Mm -hmm. What if your wife would welcome you with a smile every time you get home? Mm -hmm. Four seconds. And what if your reputation would be stellar at home and at work? Right. And for seconds of science, and then you can keep going. So why those four seconds? If I use the what if based on the subconscious or the subconscious frustrations, one or more, then I target the brain, the decision maker in the brain. With the four seconds, I create that contrast. I make, I talk, silence. And during the four seconds, their brain is starting to think about, yeah, what is that's going to look great if I'm at home at five. I could, I could go play with the kids. And then boom, I'm talking again. So the four seconds, I stop their thinking process. I start a new one. Right. But as I target each time the subconscious frustrations and they start thinking at the end of the exercise, their brain is convinced that I, that I sorted, sorted the problem for them. Yeah. I haven't done anything. But their brain is convinced that I'm the guy who helped them sort the problem. So right. 
that primal brain is going to love me, you mm-hmm. know? So that's one thing. The other thing that you should know is that the human brain takes, when you meet someone for the first time, your brain decides if you're going to like, like that person or not in 0.3 seconds. Wow. So in 0.3 seconds, without even the person talking, it deconstructs the person, rebuilds the person based on what you said, maybe past events, maybe cultural things, whatever, and decides I'm going to like the person or not. When you meet for the person for the first time on the phone, luckily, you have four seconds. Right. <laughs> wow, that's very interesting. It's amazing how the brain works. And, you know, have you found any common denominators, like, you know, certain things um, that you, that um, both in the male and female that are consistent, you know, when, you, when you're working in business, are there certain things that, you, that are very important that you need to keep in mind? Yeah, there is one thing that you need to keep in mind is that the primal brain, mostly the whole brain, in fact, stopped its evolution around, it's it's not very precise, but around 100,000, 50,000 years ago. Which means that all the processes running in our brains nowadays in a country where we can have a podcast uh, separated by thousands of kilometers on devices while I'm sitting close to my horse, for example, stuff like that, our brains are still running the same processes. So right. we have identified, or scientists have identified up to now more than 180 cognitive biases that come from all those processes. The worst one is the fight-flight process, mm-hmm. which made a lot of sense in the cave age. Right. Because, yes, you, you were in front of a big animal or in front of an enemy, so either you fight or you flight. And that process gets triggered very quickly because it's a survival tool. Yes. In fact, that process is very impressive because it shoots adrenaline in your system. Your brain gets completely ballistic. Yeah. It shoots cortisol in your system so that you feel less pain in case you get hurt. Wow. It pulls blood away from your limbs so that you blo- that you bleed less in case of, uh, of something uh, biting you or whatever. Yeah. Uh, you, your breathing rate accelerates. All those things happen. When they happen in the past because of a danger, they happen nowadays because of words. Right. If you just say a few words, you trigger the fight-flight process. That can be in a meeting, you know? That can be in your couple. A very good example. If if you want this evening, Stacey, to trigger uh, the fight-flight process, uh, you are married or not? Yes, I am. Yeah? If you want to trigger it, if you want to test it with your husband, you come home and you say, darling, we need to talk. <laughs> you see, it triggers that bloody fight flight process. Animals are very good at canceling the process, at removing the adrenaline from the body. Humans wow. are very bad at it. It takes us, it takes us hours to, to get there. So we have that process. You know, it's when you, you when you feel pissed, you know, yes. for, for hours and hours and you, and you grind things. In fact, the whole thing is to be able to shut up, (laughs) let your neocortex, let your rational brain come in, excuse me, because the problem is that, excuse me, (laughs) so the the rational brain, which would save the situation, is in fact 200 times slower than the primal brain. Wow. Wow. So the problem is, that's the problem. So we start, we, 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 we reply back, we say something that we will regret and we know that we regret it and our brain knows it because the rational brain comes and says, whoa, 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 wait, 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 don't say that. Yeah. You know, it's, it's the classic yes, but. Mm-hmm. And the moment the but comes out of your mouth, you know you said something stupid. Right. No? Your manager says, you should have done that. Yes, but. I shouldn't have said yes, but it's too late. Now I have to go with it. Yeah. Mm. That's, it's pretty amazing. Now, you know, they say that we have, I think, isn't it four different personalities? Like when we're dealing with clients, you know, there's four different types of personalities. One person might be a controller. One person might be an yeah. analytical, you know, they might need more facts and, and figures. Yeah. There, there are various tests about that with different colors. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's where you dive more into psychology. Okay. I, I'm more into brain mechanics. Uh, right. You know, 
I'm a man. I'm 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 German. Uh, I'm very basic. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for my German friends. Uh, <laughs> so I prefer the basics of the brain, yes. which can help you survive than psychology. But I, right. I, yeah, it's true. There are different there are different structures that everyone uses. Yeah. So, what are some things that you feel are really important that people in business need to focus on? And even you know, because we were talking about earlier too, is that you know, a lot of times, if, you know, a lot of these these things that we're talking about today, you could actually bring into your your home life too. You can the way you know, yeah. you know, and and it could actually not just help you at work, but it could help you with your life at home, everywhere, everywhere. You know, yeah, absolutely. And what, what are but some? I, I, Go ahead. You know, people people think that selling is just about business, but a child wanting a a, a, a candy is selling you, mm -hmm. you know? and they show persistence, yes. which most salespeople don't show. By the way, yeah. um, mm -hmm. you you wanting your husband to uh, to to clean the garden, it's mm -hmm. selling him on the idea. People who give keynotes, the first thing that you want to sell the audience is to listen to you. Yes, that's selling. You know. Mm -hmm. In fact, every persuasion you do is about selling or every selling is about persuading someone. Yes. So, yes, once you know something somewhere, you use it everywhere in your life. And it gives you fantastic uh, situations. It's, it's I mean, I once get uh, upgraded uh, at an airport for my rental car. I got an upgrade for free and the car was parked on the VIP spot. <laughs> I didn't ask for it, but... I was a human being talking to another human being, and that changed a lot of things. Yes, and I, I find when you when you, it, the way you speak with someone, the way you can relate to somebody by understanding yeah. them, and then by able by a, using your communication skills, you could really you know um, connect with that person and and really you know attain you know what you want, and, or maybe even more just by understanding the person across yeah. from you and not make yeah. not you know because I think so many people think everybody's like them and i think that's a, a big problem yeah, no. and everybody's yeah. different you know and you have to analyze quickly you know who are you talking to what's their personality and how can you relate to that person so you could have a good conversation absolutely absolutely in fact i would say even more the the ethical persuasion formula as you have understood the first parameter is about the subconscious frustrations mm -hmm. you need to know the subconscious frustrations but what becomes interesting is that the second parameter is to know who you are. Because as you say, to relate to other people, if you don't know who you are, it's not going to work. Right. And when I say who you are, it's not about just your first name, your family name, or I'm a CEO, or I'm not. That's not who you are. Yeah. It, it took me 50 years to understand who I am. Right. So I, I am, as I say, I am the happy tribes builder. Mm -hmm. I need to create tribes, make them happy. And then let them grow. Yes. That that's something I discovered over, over over my life. So that's a good question also for the audience is who are you? Try to understand who you really are. Yeah. That will help you to better communicate because then you can connect with people. People can start to relate with you. The right. third parameter is is why are you doing what you are doing? What's the reason behind it? Yeah. And you will see when I give workshops very often, I ask that. The audience, the, the people of the team who are there. And we also ask what the why of the company is. Yeah. And very often, the people who are the most happy have a why that resonates with the why of the company. Mm -hmm. And then your clients are going to resonate with the why at the personal level, at the company level. Yeah. But why are you doing what you're doing is very important. Yeah. And the fourth and last parameter of the persuasion formula is the tribe. Because we humans cannot live alone. Right. You go, you go nuts if you. I mean, the the worst pain, the, the worst uh, punishment they can give you in prison is is to put you uh, alone in some in in some cell. Yes. When they say, when they start thinking about going to Mars, they don't they don't advertise it, but they test it first. A guy alone inside something looking like a spaceship with no communication. How long it takes to go completely ballistic? Yeah, it doesn't take long. And you take the guys in space, they are permanently in connection with Earth where they can talk with someone. You know? yes. So the tribe is super important. You are either a tribe leader mm -hmm. or you are a tribe follower. And you can be part of many tribes. Your family is a tribe. Your church is a tribe. Your sports club is a tribe. Uh, your podcast audience is your tribe. Mm -hmm. So your tribe, there, there are many ways to, to keep that tribe happy. So you yes. have to. Yes, mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. 
you know, it's it's amazing how the brain works. Now, if if someone wanted to start using your theories and they 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 want they understand that the mechanics of the brain is crucial when it yeah. comes to you know um, your your work, your your personal life, you know your overall, you know your whole life, you know. Because as we were talking, we said you know your mental health affects your physical health, your physical health you know affects your spiritual health, and your spiritual and yeah. all your physical yeah. everything is just all tied in together. Now, if someone wants to start really improving themselves, what are some of the, the techniques that they can do at home to start putting themselves in, in a right frame of mind where they can implement these things that you talked about today and actually start improving themselves overall as a person? So overall as a person, uh, one, it's hard to do, especially nowadays, is to put your phone somewhere where you cannot get hold of it yeah. for at least a few hours. Right. And I, I, I mean, some people will call it meditation if you want, but at least, you know, let your rational brain work a little bit. Yes. Let, let it go free because uh, usually you, there is all those processes running around, you know, it's completely crazy. It's yeah. come, there's something happening, but let it focus on yourself. Yeah. It, it's very impressive what's going to happen. I mean, uh, I don't know who did that, but there's some guys. There was even one guy uh, in the in the ninth in the in the twentieth century, I think. He even had a room, pretty dark, uh, soundproof, and so on, where he could sit with a pencil and a notebook, and he just waited that something happened in his brain, mm -hmm. and he started writing it down. So that's that's a good thing to do yeah. because it, it teaches you a lot of how you are thinking. Mm -hmm. And don't drive those faults, you know, don't, yeah, I wasn't happy at work today, so there are a lot. No, <laughs> let it go. It, it, it's super interesting. I try to do that when I go to bed. When I go to bed, because before I close my eyes, I just let my brain go. Yes. And and I have fun, in fact. <laughs> because I, there are funny things happening up there. <laughs> That's one thing you can do. Then there are many other things that that that, that I teach in, 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 in the impact system. One is about the money mindset, you know, having training your brain to have the right mindset because we all have those cognitive biases yes already but then we have also everything that comes from from our past from our family from our environment from our culture and even to understand who we are again that's who we are you know yes. are you risk taker are you someone that's playing it super safe so that has a lot of impact on everything you're going to do, on how you're driving your own decisions. Right. Because you have to persuade yourself to make the right decisions. Yes. But that cannot be made if you have the rational brain having some sort of, because it doesn't have a lot of control, on your primal brain, you know, or yeah. at least understand what's going on. Yeah. I mean, there's a very funny thing to do just to show to people, to your audience, what's happening in the brain. The next time you buy something, I would say watch, but no, listen to what's happening in your brain. Right. Next time you buy something, I, I can swear you will, you will hear in your head, no, I was right to buy that watch because that watch is looking great and I need that functionality and this and that. And you will persuade yourself. The decision has been made at the primal level, but the rational brain needs to persuade itself that, yeah, no, it was, it was a very smart decision. <laughs> because again, the primal brain, which is a decision maker, yeah, it's USP, if I may say so. Right, right. Is, Better be better be stupid and alive than smart and dead. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's amazing. Now, you know, if you had to emphasize some of the, all the things that we talked about today, what are some takeaways yes. that you'd like to like, you know, really like have the listeners em emphasize and understand? Uh, I think the very first thing to do is to learn to identify the subconscious frustration of the people you want to get the decision from. Mm -hmm. That will that will save you um, amazing resources. That will save you time, money, energy. It requires to work hard because I'm, I'm sorry, nothing comes for free. Nothing comes easily. Yeah. And, and subconscious frustration, you cannot think that you know those, their subconscious frustrations. Yes. You need experience for that or you need help from guys like me. To, uh, to figure out what those subconscious frustrations are. Right. That's really important. That's really the key. I think, I, you know, those are good, those are good points because it really, you know, everybody is different. 
And you can't keep yeah. saying the same thing to everybody because it's just not going to work. You have to really understand, it seems, who the person you're speaking with and make some type of connection, it seems like, and then work from there. Is that basically like, you know, a gist of it? it it's a it's a good first step, mm -hmm. but you really have to go deeper. deeper. You have to go prime. You have to think that, in fact, uh, everything which is decision related is at a primal level. Okay. So, of course, when you think rationally, no, he will never want to spend more time at home. He wants to make more money. Yeah. No, he doesn't want, you know? And, and yeah, there's so much more that we can talk about. That he could go on for hours. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this has been amazing. I really, really enjoyed having you on the show. I hope that you'll come back. I, I really... Oh, it would be my pleasure, sure. Yeah, I, you know, there's so many things we could tap into. The brain is such an ama amazing tool. And I think, you know, as we were talking about earlier, you know, people don't understand everything about the brain. We're still learning about mm. the brain, you know, and there's so Absolutely. much more, you know, to learn about it. But the things we do learn, if people really understood how the brain functions and how we react to certain things, you know, I think a lot, a lot of things could be improved in today's society and today's world and what's going on. And, you know, and, and a lot of great things can come about it. So, you know, yeah. I, I really enjoyed this conversation. And now where can people find you before we go? Well, there are different ways. The, 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 the easiest one is on my website, which is happy-brains.com. Of course, they can find me on LinkedIn, Thomas mm -hmm. Trautmann. So uh, I'm the Thomas Hartman with no hair because there are some other <laughs> Thomas Hartmans. <laughs> Look for the bald one <laughs> and the one with a brain on his banner on LinkedIn. <laughs> so those are the two easiest way to get hold of me. Oh gosh, that's so funny. Um, you know, that that's great. You know, I, I really enjoyed, you know, having you on the show today. I thank you so much for coming on. And I really look forward to talking to you again. And before we go, um, you do services. Like what different types of services do you provide before we go? So uh, it starts with my book. I, I have wrote, uh, written a few books. So the last one is the biggest one. It has everything in it. So it's called uh, Married Business Owners, uh, Get More Trust, Success and Fun from Your Couple, from Your Clients, uh, Thanks to Brain Science. Uh, then there is an online training. Then I do coaching online, face-to-face. -face. I do workshops, keynotes. So all the shebang, as they say. <laughs> and I do it worldwide because I'm a man of the world. <laughs> <laughs> now, you, your other two books, what are your other two books about? So then they, they are parts of the, of, the, of the last one. So there is one that's, called, uh, that's just called Get More, mm -hmm. which is just about ethical persuasion or the ethical persuader. The other one is uh, called Is There a Brain in Your Couple? Which is only based on uh, the differences between male and female brains and with some techniques to uh, survive as a woman or as a man in a couple relationship. Uh, I'm I just want to say I'm still married with my wife. <laughs> uh, but I cannot use those techniques with her because she, she was the proofreader of my book. So <laughs> that's a problem. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so those will be the three three books, and then there are many free books that you can find on on my website, books oh, about great. emotions, about cognitive biases, stuff like that. Oh, wonderful, wonderful! And if they want to purchase your books, where can they find your books? Mostly on my website. Oh, okay. But they are also on Amazon. Oh, excellent, excellent! Oh my God, this has been great. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate. Well, thanks for inviting me. Oh, you're very welcome. This has been amazing. And I look forward to maybe talking to you in the future. Thank you so much for coming. Well, thanks. Talk to you very soon then. Have a nice yes. day. You too.